little bit of Singalam. I know Hebrew. Uh, I can read Hebrew a little bit. And uh, I can speak English. I hope you all understand. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's a good thing. And, and something new, you know, we wanted to um, learn. And before we go, are you recording already? Okay. <laughs> Everybody say, Dios bueno es. Dios bueno es. That means God is good. God is good for all of us all the time. Bible says he's a good God. He never plans anything bad for his Amen. children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if you have your Bible, just turn with me this morning for your attention. Turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. I hope you have your Bibles with you. If you don't have a Bible, you look under the seats and you will find a Bible. Uh, you can use that also. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. Look at verse 15 this morning. Luke 8, 15. Here Jesus is telling the parable and in verse 15 he says this, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word retain it and by persevering produce a crop. Let me read it again. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. Amen. Jesus talked about, you know, seed, a farmer went to sow the seed and some of the seed fell on the way path and the birds came and ate it and some of the seeds fell on a thorny ground and some of them fell on a rocky ground and they could not grow because of the problems there but then he began to talk about the good ground there is a ground that is a soil that is really really good and that is what we are going to look into today. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and a good heart. Sometimes when we know that it is God who saved us and set us free, and we know it is the Word of God that helps us to retain the Word of God into our heart, and as we grow in the Lord, <clears throat> allow the Word of God to uh, grow and flourish so that it will bear fruit. That is what God, <clears throat> my throat is, that is what God desires us to. Because a good soil, a soil that is really, really good, if it don't produce anything, it is having problem. See, every season I get to plant some seeds. Ruby and I, we go and uh, buy some seeds and plants, you know, small little plants, and we plant it, and we prepare the uh, soil for it, and then uh, after we plant it, we go and buy the food for it, and we prepare, you know, somebody said, before you plant your uh, tomato plant, you know, you, you uh, put the egg underneath it and some and what do you call the uh, skin of the banana underneath it and it'll help the plant to grow and it will bear a lot of fruit and so last year that's what I did you know I before I planted this I, I buried an egg and some uh, banana leaves over there what do you call it? Plant. Plants. Skin. Peel. Yeah peel. <laughs> peel over it and then I planted this. I tell you the truth this plant began to grow stronger than ever before, even before that, you know, year passed. And this plant was growing a little more stronger and healthier. And I said, wow, this is amazing. And then it begins to bear fruit. So it is normal for us to understand good soil has the ability to produce good fruit. And that is what Jesus is talking about. 
What are the character that Jesus says about a good soil? He considers all of us as good soil. What is the character? He says that they are noble. They are noble. And right there it says they are noble. And also it says good heart. So there's a difference between people who are not noble. There are people who are not having a good heart. And they are considered as not a good soil. A good soil, according to Jesus' statement, is a heart that is noble and of a good heart. And what happens, how this soil works? He says, this good heart will hear the word. Everybody hears, but the good heart have a way of hearing the word of God for a purpose. That purpose is to retain it. What is retaining means? You have a bucket and you fill it with water. If there is no hole in the bucket, then water that you put on the bucket will stay. It's retaining the water. But if there is a hole in the bucket, that water that you put on the bucket, what happens? It's going to leak. There's a hole in the bucket. How many of you know that, right? There's a hole in the bucket. Dear Lisa, dear Lisa, right? So if there's a hole in the bucket, whatever amount of water that you're continually pouring is going to leak out. In other words, to retain, we have to find the holes and stop it, right? If you put the hole to an end and say, I'm going to block this hole that is leaking, what God is pouring into my life, I want to retain it. I want to hold it so that I will be able to grow and produce fruit. What can we do to find out what are the holes that we have in our spiritual life that is leaking what God is giving us. You see? God is a God who blesses us all the time. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. How many of you agree with me? God blesses us yeah. all the time. Yeah. But sometimes we allow the world to come and make holes in our spiritual life in such a way that we were not careful and it begins to leak all the blessings that we uh, receive from the Lord. It's not retaining it. You are just losing it. And that is why we have to find where and how that we can retain the blessings that God has for us. Find the places where you are weak, where Satan is stripping you very often, where you are falling for the temptation very often. And that are the places I call the hole in your spiritual life. We have to be careful to find it out and block it. Hallelujah. <clears throat> block it in such a way that we give a careful thought about whatever God gives in our life. Think about this way. A ground that is not retaining the water is not going to grasp the water in the time of need. That is why we pour water for this plant every time. Every day, you know, we pour a little water and we expect this, this plant to what? Suck this water and retain it. And this water that is sucked by this plant is going to be there in the plant and it looks green and fresh. God provides all kinds of blessing in our life. We have to learn to retain it into our lives. Why we have to do it? Here he says we have to retain it so that we will be able to produce. Persevere and produce. Look at the verse it says, Jesus, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. Persevering is uh, another example for Jesus to tell us that we have to persevere, we have to keep on and keep it on in our day-to-day -day life and receive the blessing for God and then retain it in such a way that we will be able to produce the crop that Jesus wants us to. So what is retaining? Retaining is holding on to. Turn with me to Romans. There's a problem with this world today. The world has decided that we don't want to retain the knowledge of God anymore. Think about it. That is why people don't even care about God anymore in this country. You know, people are just uh, 
careless about God. If you talk about God, people don't want to hear. Do you know why? Because they have decided not to retain the knowledge of God. As long as a country retain the knowledge of God, that country will be blessed. A country that is not willing to retain the knowledge of God is a country is going to dry up. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Think about it this way. What happens in the book of Romans chapter 1, look at here in verse 28. Paul is talking about the condition of the people during the time that the Romans were ruling. Look at verse 28. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over. The result of not retaining the knowledge of God, that means understanding who God is, understanding what God has done and what is the character of God into our life and retain it. What happens is if we begin to lose it, the result will be God gave them over. Mm. Yeah. If you don't retain it, the knowledge of God, God is going to let you go on your way. So it is so important for us as believers to understand who is the God that we worship and have the knowledge of God and learn to retain it, hold on to. Now what are, what are the character, what, are, what do you consider as God? If we ask you, each one will be able to say your understanding about God, right? All the people in this world have an understanding about God. Some people have an understanding that their God is made, they can make their God out of rock, out of gold, and make it into idols, all kinds of things. But when you and I, if somebody asks you, what is your understanding about God? We always go back to the Word of God, because whatever the Word of God reveals, that is what we have to retain about the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a list that I have, I have, and I will just read it for you. This is my understanding about who God is, according to the word of God. For me, in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God is not human. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Number one, God is not human. And Deuteronomy verse, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, God is near us. And Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is a consuming fire. Deuteronomy 4, 24 says, God is a jealous God. God is a merciful God. And then if you go further, it says, the Lord is God and no other. Amen. The Lord, our God, is one. It's not multiple gods. See, there are people who have multiple gods, so many gods. But Bible says that there is the Lord. God is one. It says, God is God. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, and God is a faithful God. In Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, and God is a God who is the Lord of Lords. So Deuteronomy 10, 17 says. And God is in heaven. Joshua chapter 2 verse 11 says. And he also is here on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's in heaven and also he is on earth. That is why we worship him. We come together. Bible says he is here. When we, when we come together and worship God and join together in one mind and one heart, wherever people are gathered together in His name, He is in their midst. The unseen presence of God is here. Even though God is in heaven, Bible says, He is here on earth below. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3, it says, The Lord is a God who knows everything. Amen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 5, it says, God is greater than all other gods. People make up gods, but gods are not gods. Because hmm. there is only one God. Hallelujah. Amen. He's above all gods that Amen. people can call. And it says, God is greater than all gods in 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 5. And God is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Nehemiah 9, 5 says, God is from everlasting to everlasting. That means no one can kill God. Hallelujah. Amen. No one can even try to kill God. A lot of people in this world, they say, you know, I don't believe in God. Just because somebody don't believe in God, that will not make God disappear. Hallelujah. That's what I mean. It means God is an everlasting God. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Our mind, human mind, sometimes even 
cannot be able to com comprehend the fullness of the understanding of everlasting because we are limited being. Mm. Anything that you buy is time limited, right? You go to a store and you buy something, it has expiry date on it, right? Yeah. yeah. That is what we know. But to understand the everlasting, it is God. God is greater than you know, our understanding says God is mighty. In Job 36 verse 5 says God is mighty. And Job 36 and 22, it says God is exalted in power. Amen. God is great and beyond our understanding. No one can completely comprehend who God is because God is great beyond our understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. It's almost like a watch trying to understand the one who created it. Can a watch understand the one who created it? No way, no. right? No way. And that is the same way that he created us and we have no way of completely understanding the fullness of God. And that is what the word of God says. It says, God is great and beyond our understanding. The Bible also says in Psalm chapter 7 verse 11, God is a righteous God. He is a righteous judge. And God is the king of all the earth in Psalm 47 verse 7 and 8 says. God is seated on his throne in Psalm 47. It says in Psalm 68 verse 20, God is a God who saves. God is a God who avenges. God is holy in Psalm 99 verse 9 it says God is a holy God. No, and yeah. in Psalm 116 verse 5 it says God, God is a gracious God and he is full of compassion. The Lord God Almighty is his name, Amos says in verse 13 of chapter 4. And then it says, God is spirit. Jesus himself revealed about who God is. He said, God is spirit in John chapter 4 verse 24. And God is not a God of disorder. 1 Corinthians Amen. chapter 14 verse 33 says, God is not a God of disorder. Think about it. In a few uh, weeks ago, we had an earthquake and we had this old, uh, what we call this, this uh, ceiling and the ceiling was so old and when the earthquake came it just started moving and uh, some of them fell from this side some of them fell from that side and it all tangled up and some of the lights were crooked and everything it was not orderly right yeah. and we didn't like it do you know why because our god is a god who don't like what <laughs> messed up things yeah. he's an orderly orderly god yeah. and so as soon as you came in when you fix this and the new thing you say wow this is nice yeah. why do you like it because it's very orderly right and i have seen these people who are coming and working here and they got up and just so carefully measured everything line by line and so orderly they were doing i was so amazed the way this, these people were working so beautifully and when they finished fixing all these places, I said, wow, this is going to look really, really nice because it's very orderly. God is a God who loves orderliness. Amen. He is not a God of confusion. Sure. See, in the beginning, when God created everything, he saw the world was what? Good. Without form and void. Yeah. He didn't like it. He said, I want to bring an orderliness to this. Look at the whole world today, how orderly God has created everything. Everything has to depend on everything. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's a bigger fish, it's a smaller fish. <laughs> smaller fish, it's plankton. Yeah. Plankton must eat something else, right? The, to survive. There is a chain of things that happen in the ocean and in the land. Everything is depending on everything. All of us, we love vegetables. How many of you love vegetables? Woo, hallelujah, right? Beautiful vegetables when it's cooked really nice and you sit and eat and enjoy because if God created it and that's the first food that God gave to Adam and Eve. You can eat any fruit that you want. That is what God said. Amen. When he messed up, then he gave, okay, you can eat the meat if you want, you know? He gave them the opportunity. And how many of you like steak? Woo, hallelujah, right? Some people don't want to kill the cow. I will say, Kill the cow. <laughs> if you don't want it, bring it to me. Hallelujah. So it is an orderly thing that God has said. These are the things that depend on each other. And it is because of the orderliness. Even a small little butterfly and the, and the wing of a butterfly, if you put it in the microscope and look at it, the orderliness that God has said even in that. Look at the, your own eyes. 
in the microscope and you will be able to see how orderly God has created everything. Hallelujah. So we are worshiping a God who is not only a spirit, he is almighty, he is powerful, but he is a God who is gracious and compassionate. He's a he's a God who is spirit. It says God is not a God of disorder, but he is a God of peace. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6 it says God is a just God. Amen. And in yeah. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 4 it says God is the builder of everything. Hallelujah. Yeah. Think about it. God is the builder of everything. And in 1 John chapter 1 verse 5 it says God is light in him. There is no darkness, darkness at all. So God is light. And it's not the light that we have right here. It's not even the sun's light. He is brighter than everything else that human being can understand. Hallelujah. There are bigger stars out there. When NASA sends these telescopes up there, they want to see the furthest they can see. And the further you go, the further God has created all these great, awesome galaxies everywhere. The further you go, you cannot even find the end to it. They want to find when... The Big Bang happened. Let me tell you something. If God wants to reveal, He will reveal. Hallelujah. If God wants to close it, He will close it. So that no one can find out how God did it. Because Bible says, no way human being can completely comprehend what God did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is bigger than everything else. Think about it. And God is like God is in 1 John chapter 4 verse 8. It says... God is love. Hallelujah. We have Amen. a God who is full of love. How many, how many of you like a God who don't love? <laughs> who is really scaring you? No. Who is really want to come and just destroy you? That is not what our God is. Bible says God is love. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God is love. He's a good God. And it says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. God who is and who was. And who is to come. Amen. He is eternal God. He is the God Almighty. And in the book of Revelation, Jesus himself revealed and began to reveal the message from God. And he is saying that I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the everlasting God. Hallelujah. I am, I was, I will be. Hallelujah. There is no end to God. No matter who is trying to do whatever, God and his yeah. word will never go away. Think about, it. he said that heaven and earth may pass away, but not an iota of my word. No one can touch it. Hallelujah. There are emperors who wanted to destroy the word of God and they collected all the Bibles and burned it. And there are countries don't even allow God's word to enter into their countries. Yeah. You know what? You cannot put an end to God's word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we have a God who has revealed himself. This is just a few Bible verses for our understanding. If you study the word of God from beginning Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. God in his word has revealed about himself so much. And so to understand is called the knowledge of God. And we have to retain the knowledge of God. You know new Concepts that comes along, new philosophies that comes along, it's lies after lies after lies. In the last days, that is what is going yeah. to happen. Yeah. People are going to believe in lies. Mm. They started already believing in lies. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Think about it. Anything other than what God has revealed is lie, lie, lie. Yeah. When Jesus talked about Satan, you know, he's told the Jewish people, leaders when they come and talk to him he said you are like your father mm. he lies from the beginning mm. yeah. he lies he was a murderer from the beginning and you are like that when when Jesus was confronting these people they were just trying to trying to put Jesus down they wanted to put the son of God they wanted to find ways to kill the son of God and Jesus plainly told them you know you are claiming to know but you are blind yeah. can a and a person who is blind follow another blind and not fall into a ditch <laughs> think about it right yeah. 
He cannot follow another blind person. That is what Jesus talked about the Jewish leaders at that time. Jesus revealed who he is. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but by me. So these are the things that the Word of God revealed to us about the knowledge of God. The more you study the Word, the more you understand, and I encourage you to retain the knowledge of God. Don't allow it to leak it out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Doubts can leak your knowledge of God out. When you continue to doubt and doubt and doubt, you are putting holes in your spiritual life. You are letting things that the knowledge of God out. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The Bible says, mm -hmm. and lean not in your own understanding. understanding. Because when you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in, not in your own understanding and He will make your path straight. So retain the knowledge of God that God has revealed in His way. Why we have to retain the knowledge of God that He has revealed? So that our mind can be protected. See, when this happened, you know, turn with me to since you are in Romans, look at verse uh, chapter 1 verse 6. This is what the problem was. What was the problem? Look at verse 6. Onwards. It says, And you also among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he continued to talk about the gospel of his son. And then he continued to talk about that he is not ashamed of the gospel. And then he comes to verse 18. He says, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the God. A godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness since mm. what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them for since the creation of the world God's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen and being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. excuse. Think about Amen. it. This is what Paul says. You know, men have no excuse to say that there is no God because he looks at the stars. The stars didn't come by itself. And Bible says that God created everything. And here comes a lie from this world. And the lie is what? No, God did not create everything. And these are educated people. <laughs> and these are people who have studied in mathematics and everything else they can calculate. And they come to a place and say, you know what? Uh, this happened with a big bang. Mm -hmm. And they don't go beyond that. What causes the big bang? How it all happened? They have no idea to come to a conclusion. They only can assume a lot of things. So lies after lies after lies. And a few years ago, there was another lie. Human being came from what? Monkey. Monkeys. Monkey. Animals. Yeah. We were in the ocean, and then we crawled out of the ocean, and we yeah. continued to evolve, and then we started losing our tail, and then finally we begin to walk, and then we begin <laughs> to talk and think about it. This is what the lies that's been taught in schools yeah, today. So what is happening is people are willing to, not willing to retain the knowledge of God. They are willing to let go of the knowledge of God and want to grab the new thought that is coming along. New thought can sound good, but the question is whether it is a truth or a lie. Amen. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. free. Hallelujah. Amen. God's word helps us to understand who is the truth. And God's word helps us to live a life that is full of freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know, the Bible says, if the Son set you free, you are free, free indeed. indeed. Amen. Enjoy the freedom that Jesus offers in, the, in his word. You know, what, what happens for Jesus? How he provided the freedom for us? He provided the freedom from the, from the penalty of sin by his death on the cross. 
He provided freedom from the fear of death by his death on the cross and resurrected on the third day. When he rose again from the dead, now people were going there to the uh, sepulcher to anoint the body of Jesus. When these three women went over there and the, the stone was rolled out and, and no one was inside and these women so scared they could not find the body of Jesus. But Jesus was not in the tomb. He was already rose again from the dead. Hallelujah. Yes. He was just walking out because no sepulcher, no, no rock can pull him down because he cannot be held yeah. down under. Amen. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen. He won the battle over death and he came victoriously. Hallelujah. He's a living God. And so he can set us free from the fear of death, from the fear and the bondage of sin. If the son set you free, you are free indeed. Amen. See, I came to the Lord and asked him to forgive me of my sins. He has forgiven me of my sins. Hallelujah. Amen. So there was a chain that was bound on me, was cut off on that day and set me free. Now sin is not a master over me. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sin is yes. not a master yes. over you yes. because yes. the Son has set you free. Yes. It is the knowledge that we gain from the Word of God. So the Son, Jesus, was able to set us free from the problem of sin, problem of death, and problem of pain. Sometimes people ask these questions. What is the answer for all the suffering in this world? If, it is a, if, a, if there's a God who is a good God, why he allow people to suffer like this? But the real truth is, it's not God to make people suffer. Bible says God created everything perfectly. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. It is because that people disobeyed God. It is yeah. because Adam and Eve disobeyed God yeah. and the punishment was brought into their life. Why? Yeah. Because God is a just God. He cannot yeah. let sin go without bringing punishment to it. Amen. The punishment was given to not only Satan who tempted them, tricked them down, to Eve, you know, every woman who have a baby who is going to be born have to go through that pain even today. It all goes back to that garden of Eden, the punishment. What about the men? You know, you work so hard every day and you, you get, you know, tiny little bit of work in my yard will make me sweat like a pig. <laughs> Think about it, right? I don't want to sweat like this, but when I... Uh, mow the grass, you know, before you come uh, all the way, five, ten minutes, and the sun hits you and you sweat. <sighs> you go back all the way to the Garden of Eden because the punishment was given to man. Amen. So all the problems in the world, the pain, the reason for the disobedience of people towards God. And God in his awesome wisdom, to solve that problem, he gave his son on the cross. Bible says Isaiah the prophet is prophesying, he said in Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. Hallelujah. Yes. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the punishment that was supposed to be on us was laid upon him. Yes. And by his stripes you are healed. Heal. I look at Jesus, you know, 2,000 years ago when these people were beating him and torturing him and pulling his beard and hitting him. All this torture, he was taking it for us. Why? So that he can provide the healing. Hallelujah. Yeah. We believe in a God who provided healing on the cross for us. Yeah. There are times in my life that I was supposed to be dead. I was not even supposed to be alive. I think I was a young boy and I swallowed something I'm not supposed to. And I was just, you know, dying. Dehydrated. My mother took me to the hospital. I know that I'm, I'm dying because my eyes were just going up and my mother was just crying and weeping. And all she did was just crying out to God for healing. Amen. And the doctor came along and, and said, you know, if he lives after 12 o'clock, we have done all that we can. If he survives after 12 o'clock, you know, he'll be okay. My mother just knelt down beside my bed. And she was crying out to God for God's mercy. Amen. He reached out to me and touched me. Hallelujah. 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 And he brought healing to my life. I remember yeah. so vividly. I'm 62 now. And I look back that day when I was in the hospital as a small little boy. And I still can remember the 
the tears of my mom just coming. Praise the Lord. God is a God who hears and answers. Hallelujah. Yes, He's hallelujah. still a God. The Bible says he sends his word and yes, heal our diseases. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people ask, you know, I pray, I pray and pray, but I'm not healed. You know what? There's a level that God wants you to grow in your spiritual life. He let things happen. This happened to Paul. Paul says, he's a great apostle. Think about it. He saw Jesus when he was on the road to Damascus, you know, and, and Jesus talked to him. But that same Paul, he said, I had thorn in my flesh and I prayed to God to remove it from me, but he did not. I prayed the second time, the same thing. I prayed the third time, the same thing. And I begged God to take it away from me. But you know what God said? My grace is sufficient for you. In your weakness, you will find strength in me. Hallelujah. So Paul decided, I rather have the thorn in my flesh and God with me. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then without the thorn and I go and fall into another thorn. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. And God's grace is so abundant for all of us. Even it's available for us today. And so I encourage you to gobble the word of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And retain the word of God. Put, find the holes in your spiritual life and block it in such a way that you will not lose the knowledge of God because the world has already traded the knowledge of God for a lie. Amen. Amen. That is why the world is in this condition today. It all started in, I think, you think, you know, it's all started in 1960 when the sexual revolution started coming and people were going away from God and doing all the abominable things. And that is why the world is like this now. It, it was there from the beginning. It was in the Noah's time. Think about early in the Noah's time when God saw everybody was wicked. Every thought and inclination of their heart was wicked. And God decided to destroy the whole world at that time. And then God said, you know what? I'm not going to do this again, Noah. I make a covenant with you. I'm not going to destroy the world again with water. But he said, I'm going to send my son to be the savior of the world. Anyone who accepts Jesus will be saved. Hallelujah. Yeah. How hard you think that people think it is hard to be a Christian. I tell you the easiest thing that is possible. He has done everything for us. All we have to do is just accept him as the Lord and Savior and he will make us to be his children and then he will direct our step every step of the way to walk closer and closer to him as we trust in him. That's all it takes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God yeah. that we have a God who is able to heal and set us free. He's Amen. a God who cares. Bible says in, I think it is in Psalm 55, in verse 22, it says, cast your burden on the Lord. Amen. For he will sustain you. It is in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, Peter says the same thing. Cast your burden on Jesus for he cares for you. Do you know in this world today that we live in, people don't care about anything anymore, mm. right? The decency is almost gone. But in, the, in this time, uh, the culture as it changes, you can trust Jesus. He still cares for you. Hallelujah. You can call on him. Whatever the trouble that you are going through, you, are, you can call on him. In a personal, personal way. He's not a God who is in heaven. We cannot reach him. Because in his name, he said, call upon the Lord in his name and he will answer you. Yes. And so here is an opportunity for all of us to get connected with God. And he's a God who cares. And he's a God who listens to you. He's a God who is able to do more than you can think and ask of. He always a good God. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a bueno God. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's a good, good God. I love my God because He always, He always does good things for me. Yeah. He has never failed me. I'm 62 years old, you know, and I look back my life. There are times I should have been dead. I was in accidents. Me too. I, sh I should not live. But I was, I survived. It is because of the grace of God. 
I have traveled in India to mountains, Himalayan mountains. Wow. You know, there's the bus goes this way and there is nothing on this side. Mm. One step, you are down thousand feet. <laughs> That kind of, I, I didn't even fear. I was just going to meet people and minister to people in the Himalayan mountains. I didn't even think about the dangers. Now when I look back, <laughs> whoa, did I do that? Uh. I, I, did, I didn't even consider sometimes to, to fear because I know God cares for me and he will protect me. So we have a God who cares. All we have to do is to come to him and cast all our burden on him. Don't have to carry your burdens anymore because we have a God who cares for us. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a, he's a God who is closer than your brother. Yes. Would you bow this morning? Mm. Your eyes closed. Would you take a minute mm. you, to reach out to God one on one with him? Would you talk to him? Yes. Would you allow him to minister to 